So now we're going to talk about bonds. Uh, our discussion will be limited to U.S. Treasuries, in other words, default-free bonds. There's a whole other topic of how do you handle default risk, the price of default risk, and so forth. Interesting, but we're going to start with default-free bonds. And what's interesting about bonds is we know the cash flows. Price is ex always expected discounted payoff. You know what the payoff is going to be, and that makes us able to do things with bonds that we weren't yet, we're not yet able to do with stocks. We're developing uh, models like these that have the, the uh, random payoffs in them, but with bonds we've been able to get much further, which is uh, uh, part of why we have a separate theory for it. Um, let's get meet the players, uh, sort of look what, see what the data looks like and figure out what the puzzles are going to have to be. So I plotted here um, the history of U.S. Uh, bond yields. These are one to five year zero coupon bond yields uh, from CRISP data set. And the top uh, graph just plots for you the history of the one to five year bonds yields, along with the federal funds rate, which is the overnight uh, interest rate. The bottom graph plots yield spreads. How does the two, three, four, and five year yield compare to the one year yield? They're not always the same. Sometimes the longer bonds have higher yields, sometimes the longer bonds have lower yields. So we look at yield spreads, not just at the levels of yields. So uh, these graphs tell you a lot about what's happened. <laughs> How have yields moved uh, through, through U.S. history? The big picture you see is the rise to 1980 and then decline uh, from 1980 back to, to now. And a lot of that is associated with the rise of inflation and the decline of inflation. So that's one big pattern that's in there. The second big pattern you can see is, is the business cycle pattern. So interest rates always, they go down in, business, in recessions and come back up in booms. Then they step, they come down in recessions and come back up in booms, down in recessions and come back up in booms. It's a very, very regular association of the level of interest rates with recessions and booms. And there's a very regular association of the term spread. Notice that the short-term rates go down more than the long-term rates in booms. Short-term rates go down more than long-term rates. Short-term rates go down more than long-term rates. So in the recessions, you have an upward sloping term structure. The long rates are higher than the short rates. And the tops of business cycles, the term structure is flat or even slightly inverted. Long rates can be um, above short rates in, in, in the boom times. Um, the other thing you see when you look at it, uh, we've got inflations, recessions, uh, the spread. Um, these are not random movements. They're always moving. Uh, they're always, so they all go up together and all go down together. And when, when, they, when they move, it's always one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. They're sort of like moving, like soldiers moving down a, uh, uh, moving down a parade ground or something of the sort. A way of putting that, ob that visual observation is they follow a factor structure. There's a very strong factor structure screaming at you from this graph. Uh, in the graph, you can see that level and slope is what we call it, dominate movements in yields. Um, the level is all yields going up and all yields going down at the same time. The slope is uh, the, the longer yields going up and down relative to the short yields, or the, the short yields going down and the long ones staying the same, but it's always one, two, three, four, five. So there's a very strong, you can see a two-factor structure. We usually see mathematically a three-factor structure in bonds, but they're not just uh, 30 different things going their own which way. There's a very strong correlation in bond yields, bond returns, and so on and so forth. We often, uh, in talking about the term structure, we like to take this slice. Rather than looking at the pattern over time, on any given day, what do the yields look like of bonds of different maturity? So the, the object called the yield curve, or the forward curve, is the plot of what, uh, what um, the yield curve, the forward curve, is the plot of what yields or forward rates are doing as a function of maturity on any given day. Uh, I brought along two plots. Uh, one of them is, a, is the tre U.S. Treasury has a very nice yield curve uh, plotter that tells you what's going on on any, any given day. So here it is, uh, and you can see right now that the yield curve is upward sloping. Short-term rates are next to nothing, but once we get out to 5, 7, 20, and 30 years, uh, they go higher. The lower plot is the uh, real yields, the yields on, on uh, inflation index bonds, which uh, reflect the probability of inflation. Uh, the U.S. Treasury, like most people, plots things 
with uneven steps on the horizontal axis. One month, three months, six months takes up the same space as 10, 20, and 30 years, which is a little bit, uh, that can, uh, that's a little bit misleading about what it really means. So the other plot I'm, I'm showing you next is a similar yield curve where the x-axis has, uh, has even steps, and that gives you a better sense of what's going on with the yield curve. Here's the yield curve. Here's the forward curve. Those are the, we're going to define those in a second, but that's the pattern of forward rates at any moment in time. So uh, the, these are models of the yield curve. That's really what we're going to be doing. Uh, you can see net right now they're sloping up, but sometimes they slope down. So what are we going to do about that? Well, what, what kind of questions are we going to ask? First of all, why? As financial economists, what's the economics behind a rising or falling yield curve? Why is it that there's this pattern that yield curves rise in recessions and, and are level in booms? There's something deeply economic going on. It's, it's not just finance in its own land of ketchup prices. Uh, another thing we want to do is, is a term structure model. That's where we're heading. An object very much like the Black-Scholes model. Look at what we've got. We've, we've got a pattern of prices as a function of maturity that seem to be lying all on some line. There's a pattern here. Just as call option prices as a function of strike were all lying beautifully on a line. So how do we draw that line in a disciplined way? And once we've drawn that line, how do we price all other maturities? How do we use the ability to price all maturities uh, to price term structure options. Uh, if you have a mortgage, you may have, you own a term structure option. You might have a floating rate that can't go above a certain cap. Well, what's that worth? Uh, last time I shopped for a mortgage, I found it very hard to figure out what those things were worth. Well, how do you price and hedge term structure options? Where we're going is to be able to use uh, a l lots of arbitrage and a little bit of market price of risking to draw those kinds of lines uh, across maturity and price other securities in a consistent way. Mm -hmm.